Greetings from Castle Gory, from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. Well, <laughs> I feel like just cuddling my babies forever at the moment. However, since that's not going to be possible, I will have to plunge right in if they will come off my lap and allow me to do so. Before starting on questions and comments, I would like to read out something from Amethyst Feathers. It's serious. Can you please spare a thought and prayer for New Zealand and her people as we are in the middle of a catastrophic cyclone event that has completely destroyed much of our land and infrastructure? There has also been an earthquake on top of the cyclone. I certainly am going to be offering my prayers and I'm delighted to read it out so that you can add your prayers if you so desire. Okay, thank you so much. May I say, I remember in 2004 going to Grand Cayman after Hurricane Ivan the devastation was beyond belief. There were 30 foot dunes of sand in the middle of the road, ships in the middle of the road, houses were several million dollars washed out to sea. The devastation from a bad hurricane or cyclone shows how insignificant we, the human being, are compared to nature. I just make that point for what it's worth. Joy Cooper says, Hi Lady C, reported today in New Zealand that Her Royal Highness Princess Anne is in the country. The country is in a civil state of emergency. No one has been left untouched. The very speed of support from the UK royal family says it all. Well, Princess Anne and her husband, Vice Admiral Sir Tim Lawrence, were actually on a scheduled four day visit which has coincided with this. So, of course, their plans have been completely changed and they have been offering whatever help they can and encouragement, you know, just being visible presences and comforts to people who need comforting. They... Prime Minister is a new Prime Minister. I think he was, I think it's 23rd of January that he came into office when Jacinda Ardern retired or stepped down or resigned, however you want to put it. He is the leader of the New Zealand Labour Party and he no, it's the 25th of January that he took office, sorry. <laughs> Trivia, but still. The devil is always in the detail. The royal family, as any good representative of a state will be, they are very good at stepping up to the plate and doing what they can to encourage in a crisis. Princess Anne is a capital girl. I mean, she's, I have to say I've met her a few times and she's not my cup of tea as a person. I mean, there's no way we could ever be friends. 
she's just a little bit too dry, let me put it that way, for me. But she is an exemplary royal and she deserves all the credit that she gets. All the other royals could take a leaf out of her book. Hint, hint, you might know who I mean, because she studies a case until she's thoroughly acquainted with its ins and outs before she gives an opinion. Unlike a certain person who lives across the water, who, upon hearing three words on the subject of brain surgery, is going to tell the latest and most brilliant brain surgeon what he's doing wrong and how she can do it right. So, Princess Anne has genuine modesty. She's very much, I've always said it, her father in skirts. So, good luck to her, good luck to her husband and good luck to everybody in Australia, sorry, in New Zealand, <laughs> New Zealand, not Australia. Aurora is slightly distracting me. She wants love. Come on, Aurora, let's get some love. I think she might feel that this is an upsetting subject. Cal O'Brien says, Dear Lady C, I might not be the first to comment about this, but have you heard about the long-running cartoon comedy South Park and its newly released episode titled <laughs> The Worldwide Privacy Tour? <laughs> Truly laugh out loud. I have not watched it, but I have viewed the brief trailer and it was hilarious. Game, set and match, you could say. First a joke about the todger on Jimmy Kimmel, and now the butt of the joke for a whole program. I'd also like to thank you for taking the time in the last couple episodes to discuss Samantha Markle's lawsuit against her sister. Let's see if we have another Depp versus Heard on our hands. Well, I'm not going to touch upon that today at all because I need to make deeper inquiries before commenting. So I'm going to avoid that in its entirety. But yes, I did see a little bit of South Park. I'm afraid I don't have the time to see the whole of it. I'm sorry. Uh, but I did dip into it, interspersed throughout the whole program. And it's very funny. And, you know, when you become the butt of a joke, either you are the joke or you are then so special and so famous and so popular that you enter into the cultural brickwork, so to speak. I have a feeling Megan in particular, is going to feel that this is not a send up. She's not a joke. She has not only arrived, but she has been the classy chick that she is. She has, I've not only arrived, I've arrived. So let us see what happens there because I have sufficient experience of personality types like Megan to know that no matter what defeat is wrought upon them, they somehow manage to snatch victory out of the jaws of defeat, if only to themselves. Of course, this works very well for their mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Am I still the fairest of us all? And mirror, mirror, don't bother me just because I've bronzed up. You know what I mean when I say fair. I don't mean fair skinned because, yeah, I know I'm much more fair skinned than my 
fully Caucasian cis man, sir, but it doesn't alter the fact that fair in this sense means gorgeous, and you know I'm gorgeous. And so, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of us all in all ways, including being the most popular human being on earth. Although some of the royal family's supporters do go to great lengths to pretend that I'm not. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Thank you so much for telling me that I'm still the fairest of us all. I'm always going to be the fairest of us all, am I not? Yes, mirror, mirror on the wall. I love you. And I know that when I say I love you, you say it right back to me at the same time. <laughs> Kiwi Ann says, I see hazard and racial <laughs> spent R-A-C-I-A-L, which I have to tell you is a new one on me, and I just love it. Hazard and racial. And isn't racial well chosen there? I see hazard and racial, racial the racist, are undecided about attending the coronation. It shouldn't be up to them. They are making King Charles look even more weak. I'm sure nobody on earth will be devastated if they don't show up. Kiwi and your grom, I'm going to be devastated if they don't show up. I am, I am. So's Aurora and so's Mickey and so are those flying pigs that are whizzing around. I think the only people who would be devastated if they didn't show up would be their supporters but there is a reason why the wisdom is that they should be in attendance and it's very simple keep your friends close and your enemies closer if they are here on the spot the likelihood is they will be able to have interference run upon their mischief in a way that will not be possible if they are abroad. And remember, Harry and Meghan have been flying various kites, such as that Harry's going to be paid a great fortune. Now, is it 50 or 100 or is it 200 million or is it a billion dollars? by one of the networks who are going to want my darling H to commentate upon Pa's carnation. You see the potential for mischief? You see why it makes sense for them to be here? Sometimes at events, you don't have people because you want them to be there. You have them because it is judicious for them to be there. And yes, Harry and Meghan have been playing their usual games of, we're just so great and grand and everybody else is just trash, you know. What do I care if that 94-year-old white woman is a queen? I mean, who does she think she is? She doesn't own royal. I mean, I'm a proud, confident woman of color and I can do what I want. And if she tries to interfere with me, it's because she's a racist. Oh, that's the message I got. And the message I'm getting now is, well, 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 you know, we're going to make a lot of money if we keep on playing these wonderful games that you're teaching me how to play because you're so ace, mate. You're just so ace. Nobody's as astute and 
Nobody's as great an operator as you, Meg. You're just the most fantastic operator that God put on this earth, Meg. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Meg. Yes, yes, yes. And you keep on humiliating those jerks in England. Because can you imagine? They had the go, 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 gall. I was trying to say something like, what is it? Bitigators? Oh, alligators? What is it? Well, Meg, help me out. What's the word? You know, the thing that goes before gone. And mitigating, you idiot. Now, don't call me that, Meg. Don't call me that. Don't call me that. Everybody else calls me that. I don't want you calling me that, too. No, please don't, Meg. Meg, 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 please, please, please. Meg. And Meg, a little BJ, please. A little BJ. Such a, such a good boy. Such a good boy. <laughs> They're trying to humiliate and make a mockery, not only of the king, but of the whole system. But are they succeeding? I don't think so. I think they're childish, stupid, pretentious. You've got to apologise to Meg. If you don't apologise to Meg, I'm not going to come. It's just ridiculous. I don't think that it's rarely damaging the king, quite frankly. I don't think it's making him look weak. I think it's making them look ridiculous. Because remember, people were criticising the late queen because she gave them enough rope to hang themselves with and they did a very good job of it. And they're still doing a very good job of it, you know. Don't come between an enemy and failure when he is determined to achieve it. Forest Nymph says, Lady C, word on the street is Megsy is expecting her third child. Then in brackets, not that she actually birthed the first two, end of brackets. Do you know anything about this? Well, Forest Nymph, you're entitled to your opinion. I am not going to espouse it. Uh, I'm going to leave your opinion up to you uh, and say that everybody's entitled to their opinion, especially when the behavior of individuals is so highly irregular that it calls into question whether an, an event actually occurred or not. But that, for legal reasons, is a bridge that I am not at this juncture prepared to cross over. So I make that point for what it's worth. Is Meg pregnant? Well, I'm sure she's pregnant with a whole load of plots and schemes and plans. Do they amount to a baby? Oh, poor Meg. She's going to have a miscarriage. Is that what she's going to have? A miscarriage? Oh, Dan, she's not going to be able to come. And, oh, my God. <laughs> Julia Roberts, I'm so demure. I'm <laughs> just so. Uh, uh, yes. And uh, I was holding Lily and Archie and two of the dogs in my arms, their rescues, you know, and three of the chickens, their rescues too, because I'm a benevolent, kind hearted chick. And uh, then I felt a gripping pain. I was looking at Pa. My beloved Pa walk up the aisle and he was going to be crowned king and I felt the most gripping pain and I thought, well, I don't want to upset Lily and Archie and the chicks and the dogs. So I burst into a gentle Jesus, meek and mild, pretty, pretty, pretty child. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Rock and roll, uh, 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 tell them scold. And then as I was 
on the ground in agony, of course, not that I let it show because I'm so noble. And I noticed that there was a crayon stuck across the room. That lousy maid hadn't picked it up. Can you believe it? I'm going to have to have a word with Ellen because Ellen has that problem as well, you know. Ellen's well known to be placing all sorts of stuff on the chairs so that she catches out those lazy maids. Well, did I take a tip from her? I'm not going to tell you. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. But I have to tell you, as soon as I announce this, oh, Pa's coronation is going to be just knocked to one side as the world commiserates with me because I'm the most popular human being on earth. Yes, I am. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of us all? Well, the whole thing is farcical. There is little and nothing that Harry and Meghan do nowadays that does not degenerate into farce. From what used to at one stage possibly have been tragedy and has certainly been drama, but it all degenerates into farce. And I do know that when she came over here for the Queen's funeral, she was, according to my information, trying to get people to see that she was pregnant. Isn't it wonderful how feckin' I am? Every time I need to be pregnant, I am. Yeah. And if I lose one today, I just get pregnant again tomorrow. Aurora, honey, can you please bring that cushion for me? I think somewhere along my body needs a bit of padding. I think my back needs support at this point. But it's always good to have a cushion to spare, just in case a friend needs it. Kemp JNC says, Lady C, have you any idea why Harry would want an apology and what it would be for? <laughs> well, as with everything to do with Meghan and Harry, you're bombarded by misinformation from Montecito. So you believe anything you hear at your peril. But one version that seems to have some sort of grounding in the outer regions of reality is that he and Meghan are very put out because they didn't get the support from the royal family that they needed when Meghan was truthfully accused of committing infractions and uh, breaching codes of acceptable behaviour. Bullying is one, and they want the assurance, I'm told, that everybody's got to be loyal and support me. I mean, they've got to take the press on. I mean, we can't have the press reporting the truth. I mean, sorry, the lies. <laughs> that is the most rational of the scenarios that have passed by my inspection, shall we say, there is another bizarre one, which I will not go into, beyond hinting by saying that 
they have their noses out of joint because they were not afforded the cover that they would have liked to cover up matters that they would have found embarrassing had they got out and they have how sure this is incidentally is open to speculation but they have prepared a feast where the victims will be presented as the perpetrators. Colour me innocent. And colour has a lot to do with it. Hint, hint. Sorry, I can't be more specific than that. Legal reasons. Betty Girl says, Dear Lady C, I'm missing something here. Maybe you can help me. How did Megaphone hide her phoniness from Hazard? Or is it that Megan has agree on the whole thing against the royal family? I feel I must let it be known. I respect the royal family and I'm truly sorry for the loss of your queen. Thank you, Betty Girl. We all miss our queen. But you know, she was 96. She had a good innings and we had a good innings with her as well. How does or has Meghan hidden or did Meghan hide uh, the pastiche that she is from Harry? You know, energy and determination and application can be very convincing and seductive. And somebody who is as physically attractive as Megan would be if one didn't get to know her personality, which completely disfigures anything else. But just going off the physical attributes, when she wants to be charming, she's evidently very charming. She's very good at playing the vulnerable card. Oh, I'm just so sweet and, and, oh, yeah, and very enthusiastic. Everything is, oh, I'm just so, I'm, I'm an over enthusiastic puppy. I just, and now people who can see through the act think, oh my God, what a phony. But people who can't are duped. And I'm afraid that if you throw in a bit of the carnal into the equation, some a man is going to be really duped as long as he's well, such brains as he might have is split between two heads. And if he didn't start out with many brains to begin with, oh dear, oh dear. Mm, there's going to be a big problem there. I think it's really simple. I mean, I saw it with my mother, who was totally as Megan is, a study in artifice. But these people also have charm, energy, determination. And when they turn it on, I remember I was in Cayman once with mummy when she was dying, a few months before she died. And she wanted something out of me. I don't remember what it is now. And she knew that I wouldn't want to, and she was, she went about it in a very roundabout way. And she was extremely seductive. 
And I saw for the first time in my life, if not, well, that I'm aware of, I don't remember ever having seen it before, the power that she as a seductress had over people when she wanted to seduce them because she was totally committed and totally involved. And you could be washed away by the force of her need, desire, conviction, dissimulation, whatever you want to call it. And I thought, wow, I really got a glimpse into how she had daddy coming and going all his life. So I think that's the answer. I don't think it's a pat easy answer, but I think that is the answer. Roz6553 says, Megan and Amber Heard are very similar. Both used fake personas to land a rich, powerful, well-connected man to achieve their dreams of huge wealth, great careers and adulation. Both are destroying what they gain through their horrible personalities. They can't maintain the facade and get angry when not loved and adored by all and also when opposed. And again, I am going off my mother, as well as what I know of Megan, and what I saw with my own eyes, with Amber Heard. These are deeply manipulative, but very focused personalities with attributes that if they had not been so narcissistic and antisocial and ultimately destructive could have actually achieved a lot more than they did achieve. Because remember, all these personalities create an awful lot of their facade and they create opportunities for themselves and they take advantage of opportunities. People like that are extremely ambitious and extremely focused on seizing the day. Carpe diem could be their middle names but they can't maintain it because all these attributes are intermingled with destructive personality traits. So they are seducing you at the optimal level of their performance, which they can't keep up. And People like that get very angry when thwarted or crossed. I agree with you. I see a lot of parallels between Megan and Amber Heard. And I think it's a tragedy because had both those women had a bit more heart and cared about people a little bit more and cared about them their, the execution of their ambitions and desires a little bit less, they would have achieved a lot more. But this is what destructive and self-destructive personalities are all about. They are supreme self-saboteurs. No matter what they achieve, at the end of the day, failure is the terminus. Robin Smith says, I heard that Harry and Meghan got a mention in the well-known cartoon of South Park, where one of the characters says, they are sick of hearing about a dumb prince and his stupid wife. 
Do you think they might finally get the message, enough is enough? Or do you think they want to sue? We all want them to go away and live their private life in private. Well, I sort of covered this a bit earlier, but it's a slightly different variation on it. Oh, do I think they're going to get the message? I don't think people like that are capable of getting the message. They are firmly convinced that everybody should adore them. And if you don't adore them, it is your failing. So all they need to do is tomorrow jump up and perform the same act or a variation on it with what they hope will be a different audience to get a different outcome. Leading their private life in private. <laughs> it's a joke. They have violated their privacy and they have violated our right to have a veil drawn over their privacy in the most unconscionable way. I mean, who ever heard of anybody confessing in public to scratching around like an animal to bury a miscarried fetus? under a banyan tree in an area where banyan trees a don't grow and b it's against the law to to be handed over a fetus i mean just that alone that alone should tell you that i mean you know too much information we are being subjected to invasions of our code of decency and decorum by these ravishers of our privacy. That's right. Ingrid Self says, I am convinced that the trial in the UK went askew because the judge was frightened of offending the royal family. One hopes that will not be the case here. Well, as I said, I'm not dealing with any thing to do with Samantha's case at this point. I am I'm taking a leaf out of Archie's book. I'm going for a deep dive. Let's put it that way. I need to investigate, but no. Oh, uh, I don't think Mr. Justice Warby necessarily was frightened of offending the royal family. I think judges are a part of the establishment and depending on where their sympathies lie, they will be influenced by those sympathies to utilize the law to arrive at the conclusion that would most neatly accord with their sympathies. So I think in a situation where you have a judge and a royal, the likelihood is that the judge is going to presume that the royal, being royal, should be better behaved than the royal might turn out to be. Now, Meghan was very clever in the way she went about the lawsuit against the male on Sunday and her father. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Meghan is a lot cleverer than her detractors give her credit for being. She, by using privacy and copyright, 
at a time that she had not invaded her privacy to the extent that she has subsequently done and the invasions of privacy that she had embarked upon namely funding freedom and finding freebies with the pack of lies that she managed to feed Yosef or oh, sorry Amid Goebbels or oh, Scabies uh, and Caroline Durand about her life nobody in the judiciary would have had any knowledge of the fact that Megan was as conniving and manipulative and devious and quite frankly dishonest as she turned out to be because Mr. Justice Warby actually made it oh I'm trying to find a polite way of putting this on had Mr. Justice Warby been ruling now, I think he would have come to a different conclusion with regard to the matters of privacy. With regard to the matters of copyright, and I know this through friends of mine who have had or still have close associations with associated newspapers, Associated newspapers knew all along that it was sailing very close to the wind by quoting as much of the letter as it quoted. It thought it would be able to get away with it. This was a miscalculation on their part for which they were penalized. However, Megan was also penalized because Megan's damages were one pound. One pound. When you get damages of one pound, you have effectively lost the case. So I do not think that Mr. Justice Warby would, to wrap it up, have come to the conclusion that he did with regard to privacy. Now, did he, if he had had the benefit of all of the knowledge that we all now possess, and he did not possess any of that knowledge at the time. So he assumed that he was dealing with a proper member of the royal family, and the royal family are by and large known to be decent, reliable, trustworthy, honorable people. And this is what he thought he was dealing with. He didn't realize he was dealing with a maverick who had a scant regard for fact or the truth. So I think now the privacy part of it would actually have gone against her but the copyright part of it would most likely still have gone in her favor so because there were two separate issues in the case thomas howard says tom bowers book revenge states on page 307 quotes she had gushed in my air that's Gina met Nelthorpe Cowan talking. We're going to change the world. She meant that she wanted to rule the world. End of quotes. Lady C, we read that Mega Lion wants to be president. Should we be worried if this ever transpired? The thought of this narcissist, extreme left wing, woke and inconsistent manipulator being a ruler of anything, let alone the free world, is horrifying to say the least. Your thoughts, Lady C. Thomas Howard, first things first. You have quoted Thomas Bauer, or Tom Bauer, as he's better known, to the person who actually wrote those words first. 
in my book, which was Meghan and Harry the Real story. I'm the one who said, I didn't say gushed. I said that uh, she told Jean and Nelthorpe Cowan that she and Harry were going to change the world. I think it was after their second date, if memory serves me correctly. Might be after the third, but I think it was after the second. And that Gina thought that she meant she intended to rule the world. And at the time, I thought Gina Nelthorpe Cowan was over-egging the pudding, exaggerating. I now see she was doing no such thing. She simply knew Meghan very well because Meghan has been trying to rule the world with Harry, which is ludicrous, and it shows how incompetent they are. She wants to be president. I'm the one who said that as well in my book. Oh, should we be worried if it transpires? Well, I don't even want to address the, the hopefully totally impossible scenario. But I can tell you, if Meghan Markle were elected president of the United States of America, <laughs> there would be a flood to Russia and China of emigrants <laughs> from the United States. They would regard those two countries as benevolent, in my view. So those are my thoughts. Jan Seegers Lambert says, help me understand Meghan and Harry at the Robert Kennedy Awards, insanely gloriously happy, full of themselves. How and when will this ridiculous behavior end? Who has the courage and the brain to put, to stop this self-indulgence and insensitivity and mendacity? Life is short, enough now. Well, Jen Seegers Lambert, you're not the only person who thinks like that, but Meghan and Harry do have human rights. We live in a free society. The mere fact you're writing something like this should tell you that they are on their way out. It's only a matter of time. You cannot generate this much havoc, chaos, and hatred because that's what they're generating as well, without being consumed by your creation. I don't know when it's going to end. I don't know how it's going to end. I know what people who love Harry fear will happen at the end of a relationship between them. But Megan. You know, life can be very unpredictable. No one would ever have thought that Diana would die at 36. Or that Evita Peron would die at 33. Sometimes when people are so absorbedly I'm trying to grope for a word that is appropriate and not offensive. Energized, energized. To the extent that they appear to have a psychotic energy, it becomes at some point usually self-immolating 
and they usually burn themselves out somehow or some way, either literally or figuratively. That's usually what happens. I mean, I cannot foresee another 10, 20 or 30 years of this anti continuing. Stephanie Garamon says, Harry has no concept of how to be a businessman. He never had to worry about money, never had to earn money, and had no concept of money. So now he's trying to play in the big leagues of business and being ill-equipped to do so. He'll throw anyone under the bus for a buck, thinking that's how American business works. But American business has far more intelligent people who worked their way up corporate ladders to get where they are. And if Harry and Meghan thought they could play it in the big leagues, they are quickly discovering they can't. It's all unraveling for them. I just wish it would happen faster so we don't have to hear about them anymore. Stephanie Garriman, you're not the only person who feels like that. And to a large extent, I feel like that. I've said before, they are small time operators in big time operations or small time card sharks in big time poker games. They've had initial success, but it's been less than it would have been had they played their cards differently. And for every success they have, they lose followers. So, and I'm speaking about financial successes now. And also they have made a lot less money than they are pretending to us that they have made. That doesn't mean they haven't made money, but you can depend on it. If you lop off a zero, you've more or less got the reality of what you're dealing with. This is truly a tragedy because this is a couple, I've said it before and I'm afraid I have to say it again, that had the world at their feet. They could have achieved so much had they been less financially driven and less vain and vainglorious and greedy, not only for financial wealth and commercial success, but also for constant attention. Had they been more balanced, had they been healthier individuals, they would be now arguably the most popular couple on earth. He was, after the late queen, the most popular royal until she came along and they got involved in their double act. She would have been the most popular woman on earth now had she continued as she appeared to intend to start. But that was not a way for them to be in control of their narrative. That was not going to be for them to be able to make a shed load of money with dodgy commercial deals the way they have done, that would have been staying within the royal fold and being genuine humanitarians, effecting 
public service, not publicly effecting service to themselves and the God of Mammon. It is a morality tale. This will go down in history as a morality tale, right up there with many of the tales of Shakespeare. Really. And on that note, I will say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. Please don't forget, keep the questions and comments coming in because this cannot be done without you. Thank you so much. God bless. And could you please, if you have enjoyed this, press the notification bell, subscribe, like, and share. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.